first story. Entitled Future Mill doesn't want his son to marry defective merchandise me. And my delusional boyfriend who knew my condition supported his mother. So I broke up with him and left the country. Now my ex is in jail for assaulting his mom, lost his job, house, and begged me to reconcile, while his mom was still harassing me, accusing me of ruining her son's life. So I wrote a letter. I'm sorry. I don't remember the exact term for my condition. Basically, I have the correct parts. None of them happen to work. My uterus cannot generate lining, so I can never get pregnant. The bright side is that I have never had a period in my life, I'm 32. My boyfriend's mother found this out. I don't know how. She may have heard a family member talking about it. My family knows about it, and several of his family members that I have told, when she found out and confronted me about it. She then forbade her son from marrying me because I couldn't provide him with children. Needless to say, we my boyfriend and I have discussed it, and, though a bit disappointed, are fine with it, I am unable to conceive. She is now telling all her family members not to attend our future wedding because she doesn't want her son marrying someone defective who can't give him what she thinks he wants or needs. If she can come around and change her mind on this, that would be great. But as it is right now, I don't want her at the wedding for fear of her doing or saying something to ruin the event. And he says that while he loves his mother, he is torn as to whether to invite her or not. We may just have a quick civil ceremony and only invite a few friends and relatives and tell her later. But she doesn't even want to come over when we invite her for dinner. Not sure what to do, getting tired of her calling me defective to everyone else. His father is okay with it. His aunts and uncles are understanding for the most part. We have talked about adoption in the future, but she is also against that as it is not his blood and wouldn't really be her grandchild. Just ranting here. Thanks for reading. Relevant comments. For the commenter who said she would find something else anyway to complain about. My boyfriend's best friend came over for dinner last night. And we told him that we might not have a wedding. Just a simple civil service at the courthouse. And told him that his my boyfriend's mother is the reason for our change in plans. And he started trying to guess what could be the reason. It ranged from joking about my size I'm 6'1". And 3 inches taller than my boyfriend. And yes, the weather is fine up here. And no, I don't play or even like basketball. I get those a lot to the fact that we are currently living together, pre-marriage. When we told him the actual reason he already knew of my condition, he was quite shocked and said he'd be there for us no matter what. That and all of your positive comments on the situation have helped me to calm down. I was so upset about this and about to walk out the door and leave him and move on with my life. And I definitely didn't want to feel like that was my only option. My boyfriend is going to confront his mother about it tomorrow night. He has to do some stuff for work tonight. Thus the delay and I'll update how that all turns out. Thanks again. More about OP's condition specifically. I do produce eggs, and we have to use birth control because the doctors don't want a fertilized egg starting where it shouldn't be. My best friend since I was three has volunteered to be a surrogate if we need one, but I don't want to take her up on that as all three of her births had complications, so I wouldn't want to put her through more. Update comment. Same post. I have received two text messages today before tonight's confrontation. One good, one bad. The good one was from my future father-in-law, who said that he's appalled by his wife's actions and he loves me like the daughter he never had, and he thinks his son is fortunate to have found me. The second was from his aunt, who basically said the same thing, but added that her sister my future mother-in-law spoke to her about the whole thing, asked her not to attend the wedding, and then made some comment about why I even have breasts. It's not like I'm going to use them for anything. I am so nervous for tonight. My boyfriend has asked me not to come because he thinks my being there will make it worse. So after work I'm going to stay at home, order a pizza, and curl up on the couch and watch TV while petting the cat. That last part is not a euphemism. I get a lot of comfort playing with and petting my cat. Update. Future mother-in-law 1. I'm no longer in her son's life. If you read my previous post on the matter, I can't have children. My soon-to-be mother-in-law didn't like that and did what she could to sabotage our future wedding telling people not to attend and calling me defective. My future no more husband and his father were going to sit down with her Tuesday night and try to talk sense into her. Well, she won. I don't know what happened or what was said, but my boyfriend came home and we got into a big fight. Despite what we had discussed before, he now said that he wanted kids, and if I couldn't provide them, the wedding was off. I basically said, That sounds like your mother, not you. He replied, I can speak for myself and it escalated into a bunch of shouting at each other. And I quickly put together a bag and went to my parents for the evening. 
I called in sick from work the next day and basically stared at the ceiling. We first met when I was nine, 23 years ago. It went from being friends to more romantic. We dated through high school and went to college together. Then after graduation, we moved in together. I have never dated or seen anyone else, nor has he as far as I know. We waited so long to get married because it wasn't important to us as long as we were together. That changed when my dad got a terminal disease and he expressed his wish to walk me down the aisle. I'm his only daughter before he became too ill to walk. I'll be giving two months notice at work on Monday to give them time to find a replacement and for me to train them, then moving back to Germany. I didn't mention that my dad is German, my mom is American. They originally met when she went there for work. I was born there, lived there at first, and still have friends and family there. My friend, who I had mentioned before had volunteered to be a surrogate, has said I can stay in her spare room with her and her family until I get situated on my own there. I'm sorry, no happy ending here. The evil mother-in-law won and got me out of her son's life. Technically, she got me out of the country. I know I could move elsewhere in town, or even in the state, but I don't want to be alone here. There's too many memories, and I have a strong support group friends, family overseas, so that's where I'm going. I have been picked on so many times for so many things over the years from my height to my accent when I first moved here gone now. I sound like any other Midwestern girl to other things, but this one hurts. I was able to handle the others by telling myself, that's who I am. If they don't like it, that's their problem. And I'm sure in a few years I'll think that about this situation too, but it's too soon. Thanks for reading and your kind words of support. I'm sorry if this seems incoherent. I'm just ranting here and crying, so it's hard to keep a decent train of thought. Update in comments. Same day, same post. First of all, thank you all for your support and kind comments. Two weird things happened today. One I'm extremely embarrassed about, and the other I thought was just weird. First, on my lunch hour, I had to run to the grocery store to pick up some things for my mom for dinner tonight. At the grocery store, who should I happen to run into? But she who once could have been my mother-in-law. I don't know what to call her, so she will be Barbie. Walking down an aisle, who should happen to appear at the other end? But Barbie. We made brief eye contact. Then she immediately turned and bolted out of there. I guess she had nothing to say. The second thing was that my dad came with me to the house to help me pack up my things. He's already agreed to act as my representative when the house is sold to make sure I get my fair share. While there, he stands in the corner and just glares at my ex the whole time. Then my ex has this brilliant idea to ask for, one last time, right in front of my father. I guess I kind of snapped. I grabbed my sweater you can guess what part of me was right under it that I grabbed and said. You are never going to see these, much less touch them or play with them again or anything else. He turned red and walked out the door. And my dad went from staring with a, you hurt my daughter, you're lucky to be alive, look to just bursting out in laughter once the door closed behind my ex. He then said, I can't believe you just did that to which I replied, neither can I. For this, and the rest of my story, anytime my dad and I speak to each other, I am translating it to English beforehand, rather than typing it twice. I just basically felt myself up in front of my dad. We then went home for dinner with my mom, and halfway through, my mom asked, what does Vanessa's the girl I'm moving in with in Germany husband do again? And I just lost it. A perfectly honest question, but I just let it all go in big brain sobs. After a while, my dad came over and carried me upstairs to bed like he used to do when I was five, where I am typing this now on my laptop. I told him to tell mom that she did nothing wrong. I just needed to release her, and unfortunately for her, that was the time. A lady at work already volunteered to take my cat, and my dad will store stuff like my tennis trophies and yearbooks and pictures upstairs at his house. He said that even though I may not want those photos now, perhaps in five years or so, I will want them so he's going to keep them until I'm ready to take them back. Thanks again for all your kind words and support. I will update as warranted and answer any further questions if I can. Update comment. Well, I gave notice at work today, had some more weirdness, and am now lying in bed with my laptop. First, while at lunch today, a dozen roses came with a note that simply said, I'm sorry. No more, no less, but I recognized the handwriting. I asked my coworker if she would like them to give to her little daughter at home, and when she said, no, I know why you got them, and I don't feel right taking them, so in the trash they went with a note. I was going to wait until Monday to give notice, but the gossip factory had been running full time the last couple of days, so I went and told my boss that I'm leaving, but I'll stay to help train a replacement. My last day is ironically Valentine's Day. What the hell?
I've got nothing else to do that day. I'll spend two weeks after that here saying bye to people, going to a few of my favorite places in town. And then on February 29th, my parents are going to drive me to Chicago, about four hours away, and I leave for Munich on March 1st. My friend Vanessa lives in Munich, so I'll stay at her place a few days while I try to figure out where to go and what to do. My hometown is about a two one two hour drive away, and I still have family there, so I'll decide between now and then which one to base myself in. It's a small town maybe about 40,000. I'm not sure the exact number, but it does have a castle and a large tin soldier museum. So I don't know if I'll stay in Munich more opportunities, go up there and try to find something, or go somewhere else in Germany, like Hamburg or Berlin. I also went to the realtor who's selling the house and had to sign a bunch of papers giving my father authority to make any decisions regarding selling. The lady said no problem. She has a lot of experience with divorcing couples, and all I thought was, I was never even married. I came home and we had dinner. Then my mother and I sat down and she braided my hair. It has always been our thing to do this for mommy-daughter time. We did it for the big, it's not just for peeing talk, when I was first diagnosed with my condition, before the state tennis tournament, when I went away to college, basically big moments. I think this counts as one of those. Then my ex's best friend called, said he heard what happened, and said it was pretty crappy, he used stronger language. But there might be children reading this, and wanted me to come over for an evening with his family before I left. I was more friends with his wife than him, but I'll go anyway. Again, I can't thank this community enough for their support and kind words. Sorry if I branch into irrelevant topics at times, but I just type as I think, and this is all going faster than I thought. Last week, I thought I might have to start planning for a wedding, and now I'm planning on leaving the country and starting my life over. My mother also suggested we go to the zoo in Chicago on my last day in America. I went there when we first moved to America. She thinks it would make the perfect bookend to my whole 23-year stay in America. It seems like just yesterday when we moved into a new house and a nice boy and his mother came over, brought us a basket of cookies, and welcomed us to the neighborhood while I was out front keeping my dog away from the movers. Times and people sure do change. Relevant comments. A user is rightfully disgusted and baffled at the one last time comment. He was never like that. Or I wouldn't have fallen in love with him in the first place. It's almost as if his switch was suddenly switched from good to evil Simpsons reference. He used to be embarrassed to even hint in front of my father that we were having a sex. Then he has no problem asking for one last time in front of him. My co-worker said that I should treat it as if he had died, mourn the loss, and move on. And someone else took his place. I also don't know why. After receiving supportive emails from a couple of his family members his father and aunt. I've now heard nothing since from either of them. I didn't know his mom had that much power over them. Then again, I didn't know until recently how much power she had over my ex. A commenter hypothesizes, maybe he would have been written out of the will. I would have thought that too. But they don't make much, enough to live on, and have no holdings I am aware of. But maybe there's a secret stash somewhere that only family knows about. Update in comments. Update. Warning. There is an act of violence in here, and I'm still shaking from it. No. The main one wasn't against me, depending on how you define violence. My ex came over to my parents tonight and said he wanted to talk. I have a good idea what he hoped would happen, but it definitely did not. We had a brief chat in which he said he was sorry, and I told him I was moving back home to Germany soon. He started to tear up, and so did I. I take responsibility for giving him the opening that was about to happen. We're both crying, and we start hugging. As we're hugging, I don't notice one of his hands moving down my back to my arse until he gets a good handful of arse cheek and squeezes it. As soon as it registered in my brain what he was doing, I stepped back and let loose with my 6'1", 155 pounds. I'm a big girl and 25 plus years of developing a good forehand in tennis and just slapped him in the face. My hand still stings from the force of it. He staggered back and I just pointed to the door and yelled, Get out! Though I may have added some naughty words with it. He looked shocked at me and hung his head and just walked out the door. After I heard him get in his car, start it, and drive off, I broke down in tears. My father, who had been waiting and listening outside the room, the entire time he later explained it as listening to see if I needed backup, came in the room to me crying more at this point, and he started to give me a big hug. A couple minutes later, while he's holding me, I thought that he might reach down and squeeze the other arse cheek. That thought sent me into hysterical laughter. We stood there holding each other, while I was alternating between laughing and crying. My mother comes downstairs and fixes us all something to drink. 
A few minutes later, my phone rings, and according to caller ID, it's Barbie my ex's mother, and the one who started this all. Now I did not hear her side of the conversation, so anything attributed to her is what my father told me later. She basically says, she's going to call the cops on me for assaulting her son, and my father says it was justifiable self-defense. My ex attacked me first the arse squeeze, and we have cameras to show the whole thing to the cops, should they show up we don't. But she doesn't need to know that. She hung up, and I haven't seen a cop since, so I don't know if she was bluffing or my dad's threat scared her off. Now, I will admit that I missed the physical part of our relationship, and he was my first and only at many things first date, first kiss, first as ex, etc. But none of that outweighs the hurt he and his mother caused me. I would rather go celibate for life rather than let him touch me again. I shouldn't have let him hug me in the first place, but it was a weak moment, and I know not to let him do that again. Again, thank you for reading and the kind words of support. I thought I wasn't going to update again after the last one, and yet something else happened. Hopefully, unless it is a response to something written here or a message, you won't get another update from me until I am in Germany and away from this mess. It's late, and I'm going to bed now. Update in comments. Update. One mystery solved. Throughout this whole ordeal, there have been two mysterious things I had no answer for. One is why did he suddenly change his mind, and two, how did Barbie his mother find out? It wasn't common knowledge, nor did I tell her. I had my suspicions as to how, and yesterday, they were confirmed. Was downtown on my lunch break. I've been training the new girl who's replacing me. She seems really nice and capable. I would have liked to work with her if the circumstances were different. At lunch, I ran into Steve, his friend and neighbor, whom he's known since he was three or six years premia. He said he had heard about us. He said it was a shame that we had broken up and wanted to know if it had anything to do with my infertility. Now, I had not told Steve. He wasn't a close enough friend to confide in. So I asked what he knew of my infertility. He then told me the whole story. This is from his point of view, and I'm only relaying what he said, so it may not be 100% accurate. Steve and Jack my ex were working on Steve's car, don't know what kind. Only that it's from the 60s I'm not a car girl, never have been. Four wheels, an engine, and a good stereo system are all I need to know. If you ask me what kind, I would say it's blue and old, nothing more. Now, before this, we had a very informal proposal. What do you want on your toast? It looks like it's going to rain today. Should we get married? So they went to Jack's parents' house. He wanted an old heirloom ring that had been in his family for centuries and wanted to make a formal proposal. He asked where it was and why he wanted it, and his mom ran crying with glee upstairs to find it. When she came back down with it, she was crying and said it would be nice to have the pitter-patter of tiny feet around the house, and was I currently pregnant? It seemed odd to her, I guess, that we were getting married after 16 years of dating or living together, so she thought maybe he had knocked me up, and that's why the proposal after so many years. He said we already had the pitter-patter of tiny feet in Babette my cat. She said, no, I mean a baby, silly, and he responded with, Mia can't have babies, and then proceeded to tell her my whole medical situation. She said something like, this isn't going to happen, went back upstairs, returned the ring, and slammed the door. The next day is when she forbade forbade. Me from marrying him, started calling me defective, and started this whole story. After telling me this story, I told Steve that yes, that is one factor in our breakup. He said, what a shame, you two made a great couple and Jack was probably devastated. I then said bye and went on to lunch, and when I got home later that day, I went to my room and cried into my pillow before my father came up to get me for dinner. I had always suspected that he told her somehow, and while it's not a big state secret, it's not something I have ever felt comfortable telling people, now that I am telling this story on this site. I have no problem saying, my parts don't work, to complete strangers, and it's been comforting. Thank you all for your support, and I leave for Germany on March 1st. I'll try to answer any questions you may have from me before then, but I guarantee nothing as I'll be kind of busy with packing and doing my farewell tour around town saying bye to old friends, going to restaurants I like and won't be back to in years, if ever, things like that. So that's one mystery solved, and the other could be solved if he would just answer it, rather than taking any form of communication I have with him as some sort of desire for him to get in my pants. Thanks again for your words and support, and barring something big happening between now and then, the next part of my story will come after March 1st. Update in comments. Two-part update. We'll start with the good first. I left America on March 1st and flew to Munich. Sat next to an elderly lady who was scared to death of flying. 
but was going to visit her son and his family. I don't remember what he did or why he was in Germany. So for the ten or so hours we were in the air, she held my arm in a death grip, and any time we hit an air pocket or shook around a little, it was a relatively smooth flight with just a few bumps here and there. She gripped even tighter, and later I discovered I had a bruise, but fortunately her nails didn't dig in. After planning and going through customs, she met up with her son and his family. This happened before all the quarantine and isolation started in earnest, so not much of a problem there. Then all the fun started with the quarantine, and I've spent most of my time at my friend's house, tutoring her kids in English and generally helping out around the house. I had three interviews scheduled before I got here, but they were all cancelled. My uncle up in Kulmbach has volunteered to drive the three hours down and take me back up there, but I haven't decided yet. The bad apparently Jack my ex has been having a hard time with this. Normally, when I and the family flew back to Germany in the past, we flew out of Cedar Rapids, up to Chicago or Minneapolis, then flew on to Germany. Apparently, from what a friend told me, he drove out to the Cedar Rapids airport, not knowing we had driven up to Chicago, and I flew direct from there. When I didn't show up there, he went home and figured he got the time date wrong. He sent a few letters to my house. I had my mother open and read one to me on the phone, but shortly stopped her. Even though my mother and I have been open about my SX life, there were things in that letter I didn't feel like hearing or having her hear. The letters stopped when he lost his job for non-quarantine related reasons and later wound up in jail. Nobody has been able to tell me exactly what happened, but best guess from what I've been told, one night, he got into a shouting match with his mother, which turned physical, and his dad had to peel him off her until the cops showed up and arrested him. So I guess things got pretty bad so that one of the neighbors called the cops. I never would have expected this from him with anybody, much less his mom. If only he could have fought this hard for me way back, when things might be different. So, as of this update, I'm sitting around with not much to do. But at least I'm not in jail. Sorry for any errors. I loaned my laptop to my friend's son, and it hasn't worked properly since, though he claims he did nothing bad to it. He's a good kid, so I believe him that it was probably just an accident. I hope everyone is staying safe and doing as well as they can during this time. Off Wiedersehen. Mia. Comment. Thank you for your kind comments. The older lady on the plane was funny. When she sat down, she said, S.H. Burkan, Z. English, intentionally misspelled to demonstrate how bad it was. I hope things are well with her, and she's able to get back to America eventually. There is a restaurant in Munich. I was looking forward to going there, but that's been put off for a while, I guess. I have no idea what his intention in going to the airport was. If he thought there might be a talk her out of going moment, or just to simply say goodbye. I asked my mother to save up all the letters and mail them to me in a few months, just out of curiosity. Maybe I'll read them on my birthday July 12th, yet another thing to think about and ponder for a while. Thanks again for your kind words, and stay safe out there. Comment. Thank you, and I saw no problem with your English. I had been thinking of calling him while I was here, but his recent troubles have made me rethink it. I have no idea how you call someone currently in jail. If I am motivated enough, I might try it. He only mailed the letters to my parents' house in Iowa, because he has no clue, other than Germany, where I am right now. I am hoping that when this virus thing blows over, I will return to America for a visit in two years, and maybe I will feel comfortable by then to see him in person. It's like he had a complete personality change, and that's what mystifies me the most. He went from quiet and reserved to some sort of deviant maniac, and now I wonder when at some point in our marriage, if it had gone through, he would have laid his hands on me like he did with his mother. To answer a previous question, I will be 33 in July, and he will also be 33 in October. I have been to a lot of European countries, but Spain has not been one of them. Maybe once I get established here, it will be easier for me to jet over and check it out. Thank you again for your kind words. Stay safe during this current crisis. Update. I actually spoke to him yesterday on the phone. When last I updated, he had been arrested and thrown in jail for assaulting his mother. I don't know if he's out on bail, or there were no charges, or what, but he has spent the last few days sitting in my parents' front yard, doing nothing but sitting. My dad said he was going to go out there and kick his arse, but my mom, who's definitely the cooler-headed of the two, went out there and calmly told him I was gone, and he should pick up and start his life over too. She called me and told me this, so I decided to call him, which I did last night. He answered and sounded kind of relieved it was me, but also sad. J is Jack my ex, M is me or Mia. Either one works. 
This is the conversation to the best of my memory. J. Hello. M. Hello. I understand you're out in my parents' front yard. Well, I'm not there, so please leave them alone. J. I was hoping that the rumors I heard weren't true, that you were still here, and we could talk. M. I tried talking before, and you just took it as a chance to grab my arse and act as if SX could solve this whole thing. J. I'm sorry. I've never broken up before, so I'm not sure how to go about it. M. I've never broken up before either, but I think I've handled it better. I just gotta know why. J. I have to do what my mother says, and she wasn't happy when she found out you couldn't have children. M. You're 32. I don't think you have to do what your mother says anymore. J. You just don't understand. M. I do understand. We had discussed the problem before and had come up with solutions that apparently aren't satisfactory to her. So you threw our relationship away. Did it mean that little to you? J. You didn't have to go away. When are you coming back? M. Not for a couple of years. Once this whole pandemic thing is over, I can hopefully find a job and my own place to stay. J. Come back, please. M. I'm sorry, but you made your choice. Barbie his mother or me. I hope the two of you are quite happy together. Throughout all of this, he is crying, and I'm doing my best not to. J. Please come back. We can get married and adopt or whatever. I'm sorry. We can find a way to work this out. M. I told you there were always alternatives, but you threw those away along with me. Plus, Barbie's going around calling me defective, and she won't accept us adopting. How does that change? J. You're not defective. I'm sorry, but I can't control what she thinks. M. No, but you support what she thinks. You've known this about me since we were 16, and suddenly it's an issue. J. I don't like her calling you defective. In case you hadn't heard, I just spent time in jail defending you. M. Maybe if you had done that when this all started, I'd still be there. I think that broke him, because he kept quietly whispering sorry over and over, and then hung up. I just laid on the bed and quietly cried until Victoria my friend's oldest child knocked quietly and told me it was time for dinner. Sorry for the formatting. Still trying to get used to how Reddit works. Also sorry if I came across as a bee in this. But when someone throws away a relationship that goes back to childhood, I can be a bit upset. I hope everyone is staying safe through this whole pandemic thing, and hopefully, when it's all over, I can get on with my life here in Germany. Update. Warning. There is talk of self-harm in here, not me, just someone else in the story hinting at it. So, I moved out of my friend Vanessa's this weekend. Her family was incredibly nice in taking me in. But when we first planned this, it was pre-virus, and I thought I'd have my own place and a job and everything. My uncle said he would drive down and pick me up, and I felt better taking his offer than continuing down there. So, he came down Saturday, spent the night with some friends of his, and we drove back up to Kolmbach on Sunday, where I am currently staying with him and his wife and typing this out before bed. It's weird being here, given I was born here and lived my first nine years here, but even when I've been here on vacation in the past, it never felt as strange just being here. I don't know if it's the feeling of the town being deserted or my current personal situation. It just doesn't feel right. Anyway, that's enough of miscellaneous rambling. I'm just trying to avoid typing the real part of this story if you couldn't tell. Friday night, Jack my ex called me. I still have the same phone and the same account back in Iowa. So when it rang with his distinct ringtone, it caught me by surprise. I picked it up and said, What do you want? Which I know was a bit rude. And I apologized to him about it as soon as he said. I just wanted to see how you were doing and say hi. So, we proceeded to have a pleasant conversation, when I could hear screeching and a, is that her? Followed by him saying, I'm talking, leave me alone, when she Barbie, his mother who started all this got on and said, leave my son alone, haven't you done enough damage? To which I responded by simply hanging up. She must have gotten his phone and tried calling me a few more times, none of which I answered, but when I checked voicemails later, she was going off on how I, ruined his life. How he had lost his job which we knew was going to happen anyway last year when the owner of his company announced his retirement and that he was selling off the assets. But he gave one year notice and even helped some employees find work elsewhere. He had lost his house we sold our house after our breakup. He had been caught, drinking in public. I guess he bought a few bottles, went down near the lake and drank in the park and got busted by the police for it. Heard that from another friend earlier. And how he had attacked her mentioned before. But I secretly hoped he would have decked her good before his dad intervened. She even got to use her favorite word, defective, saying that if she had known 16 years ago that I was defective, 
she would have gotten her son a nice, normal girl to be with. She also mentioned that Jack had talked about self-harm recently, saying there's no point in going on. I tried calling back, but every time, she picked up the phone and resumed her screaming. So I gave up trying and just wrote him a letter, which I sent to my parents for them to deliver to his house, figuring Barbie would just see it was from me and intercept it if I sent it to him directly. I told him that I still loved him and wanted him to do well in life and move on, but that it was over between us. So, here I am 5,000 miles away, civilization shut down, living with my aunt and uncle, and just waiting for when I can put my life back together. Thanks for reading, and sorry about any formatting errors. I think I'll put up my laptop now and go to sleep. Second story. My mill wants me to change the name of my business maiden name to their surname. How to soften the blow. My mill 64F wants me 34F to change the name of my business maiden name to their surname. How to soften the blow. I 34F am a cosmetic surgeon, and I opened my practice last year. It's been doing very well, and I'm doing the planning now to open another branch in a neighboring state, which is my in-law's state. My husband comes from a well-to-do family grandfather was wealthy, whereas my parents were immigrants and had to get their masters here again while already having a PhD from my home country. I barely saw my parents growing up so that they could house and feed us. My practice has both my mom and dad's last names. My husband is a great guy, and his family is very nice, but they value different things and have weird priorities. I wanted a small wedding in the US because I had another reception in my parents' home country. Mill offered to pay for a larger wedding so that they can invite more of their friends, but I stuck to the 50 people limit which is a lot. I wanted 30 at the beginning because I wanted people my husband and I both knew and loved to be there. I didn't want my Mill's stylist, her business partner, or their family lawyer to attend. She eventually complied and kept meddling occasionally from then on. I never changed my last name, but would unofficially be referred to as Mrs. Husb's last name. At work I still use my name to not confuse my staff and patients, but also to honor my dad for everything he has done all my life. Now that I'm opening another practice, Mill wants me to use the family name as the brand. I told her it would create confusion and people might not know it was mine. I built a lot of trust, patronage, and recognition using my brand so I don't want to keep correcting people and to start from the bottom in a sense. It makes perfect sense and is the smart decision business-wise. There's also some legal and extra paperwork to be done if I used a different name. She said she is so proud of me and wants to show me off. And also her family name is very famous around here, so I might get more patience. She also joked that she should get some royalty for that too. Their surname is an old American name that, back in the day, used to do bad things that is, corruption and more. I do not want to use that name. I am Southeast Asian. My staff is diverse, and it's something I am proud of since we do focus on ethnic and cultural aesthetics instead of the generic white, European aesthetics. I'm walking on eggshells here, and I plan to let my husband deal with her. They always do a family dinner, and I see her maybe once every two weeks, and she always brings this up. Recently, two of my sisters have been pestering me to do it too. Update. It scared me how many people commented on my previous post. I read through most of the comments and rest assured, I am never ever going to change my brand. I just wanted a soft way to tell my mill and sills to back off. I didn't mention this, but my husband doesn't know about any of this. So many assumed that he knew, but just did nothing when it's my fault that I never included the information that I never told him yet. To me, this is a trivial matter, and I did not want to involve him since he is a professional too, but in a different field, and he's handling a big project at the moment, and I don't want to pile this on him. I respect and agree about those suggested dialogues on how to tell my mill to stop bringing it up. But I wanted a way to gently tell her, I won't be changing my brand as opposed to, no is a complete sentence. And while it is, I would have definitely said that to a rude stranger, but not to a close family member. Call it the Asian in me, but I don't want to be rude to her. My parents have returned to our home country to enjoy retirement. So the only family I have here is my brother, who lives in Canada. My in-laws are my only family in the States and they are good people, but sometimes their entitlement does show. I let my husband know, and he was mad that I didn't tell him earlier. He's a lawyer and helped me build my business. He said that he never felt like less of a man when I didn't take his name since it wasn't me that went through medical school and residency, and hell, if I did, I knew my weak horse would tap out early. Lol. He planned to FaceTime my mill tonight to tell her to back off. Something I feel guilty of saying in my last post was saying white. European aesthetics are generic. I wrote that post quickly in an Uber and didn't properly think that through. 
My practice caters to all skin types, for all races, and for each of their own very personal expectations of what they want to achieve. I owe a big apology to anyone who got offended. And yes, I do have a prenup. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.